Hello everyone, welcome to Alpha IVF. As we know, one of the important factors that really, really affect the decisions in a couple seeking fertility treatment is the success rate. But what does IVF success rate really mean actually? So today, we are going to get a better understanding about what does IVF success rates really mean from one of our senior fertility consultants, Dr. Leong Wai Yu. So with him, we will be able to understand what is IVF success rates and what are the methods that one can do in order to improve their IVF success rates. Today, we're going to talk about what does IVF success rates mean. Hello, I'm Dr. Leong from Alpha IVF. Now, when you see your doctor pertaining IVF, there will be various rates that the doctor will discuss. Uh, for example, pregnancy rates, implantation rates, and so on. Of course, pregnancy rates and implantation rates are very important. It's a way to gauge whether things are going well, going to go well for you in a place where there are better uh, pregnancy rates. But what's more important actually will be take-home baby rates. Now, for example, I'll make it very basic and simple. When we talk about pregnancy rates, it simply denotes what are the chances of the patient getting pregnant if she does IVF. So for example, if you have 50 patients doing IVF and you have all 50%, all 50 patients getting pregnant, it's going to be 100% and vice versa, for example. So although that is important, uh, a lot of times we need to know whether this pregnancy goes on all the way to nine months well, whether things are going to go well or not. Because most important, at the end of the day, you want to have a healthy baby in your arms at the end of nine months of IVF, of the pregnancy. So take home baby rates, in most cases, will give you a better understanding of whether the IVF and the pregnancy will go on well in a very general sense. As you know, pregnancy can occur, even naturally, and miscarriages can happen in the tune of about 15% in most cases. Of course, I'm not saying that uh, if you do IVF, you're not gonna have any miscarriages. You will still have miscarriages. But if you wanna talk about a successful take-home baby, meaning good take-home baby rates, first thing is to minimize miscarriages. Because you can get pregnant, but if you're gonna lose the pregnancy in the first three months, of course, it's not gonna give you any good results at the end of the day. So no doubt you can have good pregnancy rates. I'm sure all IVF centers will try their best to give you a pregnancy. But what are you doing as a patient to try to ensure that this pregnancy will go all the way to nine months well, and therefore giving yourself a good take-home baby rate? Now we know that one of the major causes of miscarriages is because of babies or fetuses having abnormal DNA or genetic material. It's not anybody's fault, things do happen uh, uh, spontaneously even in, in, in nature. And in such cases, more often than not, embryos will not proceed themselves any further and the mother will end up with a miscarriage, generally in the first three months of the pregnancy. Now, with the modern advent of IVF, with PGT or PGS, we can assess the genetic makeup and the material of the embryos before transfer. Therefore, if you were to only transfer genetically normal, meaning the chromosome number, which is normal, into the womb, not only are you going to improve pregnancy rates, you will also improve take home baby rates. Because theoretically, by putting in chromosomally normal embryos, the pregnancy should ensue with a normal fetus and therefore minimizing, I'm not saying completely zero, but minimizing uh, miscarriages in the first trimester. Therefore, one way forward is of course, doing PGS or PGTA uh, for your embryos in IVF to ensure a good take-home baby rate, which is what you would want. Yes, of course, uh, every bit helps. Um, you know, in order for us to get good embryos, we need to have good eggs and good sperm as well. You know, we can only go as far or try to help 
as as far as the the, the sperm and eggs that we get, you know. So uh, therefore, if you have any medical conditions, uh, for example, diabetes or high blood pressure or any connective tissue diseases which require treatment, a good control of those diseases prior to starting IVF would of course help in the general outcome. General health uh, is also important. For example, if you smoke a lot or if you're a heavy drinker, you know, uh, by s trying to, to control those vices, smoke less, quit smoking, drink less, quit drinking, those in its own very way would help. Supplementations uh, with various uh, vitamins, uh, minerals would also benefit. You know, for example, uh, coenzyme Q10, uh, vitamin D would be helpful for women who are trying to conceive uh, and hopefully will improve uh, egg quality, not compulsory, not necessarily so, but it may help with egg quality. And men normally uh, can take supplements high in zinc, which may help improve sperm quality.